So developing uh, ecosystems, uh, it also needs uh, both sides to start working together. This is one of the big silos and there's a, a typical kind of even sometimes very strong statements that well it should it should happen from bottom up it should all start from entrepreneurs themselves it should all start from you know those people should make the happen and the public side should stay away and the government should just stay away um, but the reality is that what do you do if that doesn't start itself what if it doesn't ignite uh, should government just hope and pray uh, should there any way not be efforts put in place? No. Uh, it can have start from either, either direction and hopefully it starts from both directions. But the key is that the, the, the bottom up can really deliver on quick and short term iterations, innovation, testing different support services, measuring their effectiveness. And, and create many things very quickly. But at the same time, many of these project-based funding structures or models that are simply based on individual people caring or their individual effort, oftentimes not even rewarded in financially to, for them to sustain themselves, uh, are not sustainable. So there needs to be a balance created between the sustainable side long-term development and with these quick and short-term bottom-up um, uh, passion-driven activities and effective collaboration between different parties. So it really becomes also a public-private partnership effort. And there is a natural dependency, of course, between the private and public side. So public side, of course, wants to support more innovation and growth for economic development. And they want their societies to be healthy, they want people to have opportunities, they want the economy to develop, to have um, finances to support all the different um, functions for elderly people and all, all, all sorts of things uh, for well-being of the society. Private side, they need support in form of innovation policy, facilities, channels, knowledge, and non-core items. So definitely there needs to be good uh, road infrastructure, travel infrastructure, digital infrastructure. There needs to be clear rules, predictable uh, government, uh, uh, good talent. Uh, there needs to be good facilities available for their employees, for all the people there. And of course, private side, when successful, they deliver value, so if there's a tax. And in context of this, it's good to remind about the tax that Apple has, 30% of all of the applications in their platforms. Many countries would be envious of being able to get that kind of taxing um, happening in their system. And people are happily paying that. Why? Because the experience and the access uh, overweights so widely uh, that nobody even considers trying to publish the application without putting it in the Apple Store. So this is a, a kind of an analogy here that if you have a good ecosystem, people are very happy. They don't mind paying taxes if they experience good services. But unfortunately, many startups actually experience it so that startups and new companies have the worst systems for them because everything is designed from big companies' perspective, lobbied sometimes because of big companies, and uh, or it's just not up to date to the environment what startups need. And therefore, they don't experience good services, yet at the same time, all of the same requirements are applied to them. So for public side, they really need to develop um, and grow services. And if they can't cater for economic development, then there is declining tax base and there are lack of resources to support the private side to build, build uh, and make it more uh, better experience for them to operate. So 
regardless of the clear synergic benefits, there is this uh, dilemma uh, also on both sides. There's frustrations uh, usually where private side feels that they can't really influence or change things that would be important for them. And at the same time on public side, uh, there's challenges to really understand why such changes are needed, uh, perhaps not understanding the topics, the context, the business verticals, the new innovations, um, the new possibilities, the new challenges. And at the same time, it's hard to read any individual uh, private actor because, of course, they also have their private agenda driven and they are naturally biased to try to improve their own individual companies' um, uh, working conditions. Also, the private side can't financially sustain to take significant effort, specifically startups and young companies, to actually spend time and money trying to convince the public side to do uh, certain changes. On the public side, on one hand, uh, it's commercially unsustainable uh, long-term risk uh, if they don't manage to improve the conditions and some other countries and cities improve them faster and better. At the same time, public side, we need to make sure that they are not making uh, decisions or regulations or changes that are focused to give advantage to certain type of companies or certain type of profile, certain size of or certain business verticals, at least not in a way that would harm the other types that are also trying to develop business. The key thing here is that more dialogue is needed and it needs a more neutral type of um, dialogue, but it, this dialogue needs to be also systematic and development focused um, and tracking these developments, um, both from public and private. Uh, within the context of startup ecosystem uh, and specifically in the development phases, the earlier the development phases is the ideation, uh, talent um, creation, education part, knowledge capacity building, the more it relies on public services or publicly funded services or public finance. The more it becomes about uh, growth, scaling, access to markets, um, uh, money for scaling, resources for scaling, uh, access to channels, uh, the more it becomes private side. And at the same time, usually the weight shift between innovation and startup process in general to, um, to uh, business vertical specific knowledge and expertise. So, before going forward, actually, I could stop here for a while and, and check if you have uh, any questions that have come to your mind that you would like to perhaps get clarification or some additional information of the topics covered so far. Okay. Um, so feel free to, to think or write down your questions or you can also write them uh, here uh, during the presentation. I have Oscar here um, supporting uh, the, the webinar so I can, I can cover those questions uh, along the way as, as needed. So <clears throat> Uh, continuing on the mapping of the ecosystem, so to start kind of getting a, a directory of different support services, um, it, it, it starts with a simple exercise of mapping out the starting position. Uh, basically, to identify what services are existing and what services are available at different phases, to then start to see visually where, where the gaps and bottlenecks uh, exist. And then 
uh, as a next phase on that is to start implement measurements to be able to track this uh, changes and activities that are happening within the ecosystem through the different services and actors that are that are a part of it. And then from here it becomes to iteratively improve, uh, measure and learn along the way. So again using the open standard framework uh, as a canvas we can help to describe the ecosystem, to map out the ecosystem, and use it to create more common language uh, throughout the various elements of the, of the ecosystem. So basically, we can put uh, the canvas like this. And of course, this is just a visualization, and you can go much further than this, but this is the kind of very plank, simple way to start putting the services. So what organization and what service are they providing at what phase? Are they catering for the innovation side or are they catering for the team building organization development side? So this can be applied to incubator, accelerator, co-working space, investor, startup event, training event, workshop. And, and, and all of this can be indexed uh, in a such way and it can be clearly seen how valuable that simple exercise can be for the entire ecosystem to understand where am I as a startup or as a talent or where is the company that I'm currently part of um, in their development phase and what services are available to me and when. So if we think about the usual uh, targets um, that the, the the companies are developing through their uh, life cycle. This is also then the types of services that they should focus on supporting. So first there's idea creation and idea validation. And on the organization side, there's attracting and inspiring talent uh, to team formation and then moving to team validation. On Idea, ideation, it becomes more about product creation and then starting the business model creation. And then it moves to product validation and business model validation. And it comes from team formation to validation to organization building and also team's commitment validation. So are they truly going to stick with the company? And this is from entrepreneur's perspective. This is from uh, the, the, the factual things that need to happen uh, in any business to be able to, to uh, kind of mature over time. If we look at the surrounding ecosystem key kind of organizations on, on mature side, we have big companies. On the, on, the, on the early side, we have higher education and other education organizations. Um, we have uh, those that feed research and other uh, uh, knowledge and findings, and at the same time also talent. And then we have the big organizations who are very interested in finding new innovations, uh, open innovation, and at the same time also attracting entrepreneurial talent, regardless of whether they acquire a company or whether they just want to hire those people who have entrepreneurial experience. And then on the, on the bottom side, we have the government, of course, who impacts all of the activities through regulation and laws and policies. And then we have funding organizations of different types, all the way from banks and, 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 and uh, innovation funds, and VC funds, and angels, and crowdfunding, and so forth. So basically, in between is then where the startups are created, the support organizations provide the services, and where the talent moves um, across the, the, the journey. So as a snapshot of how typically how the services are provided um, 
in there is a certain level of this what what, what I call buffet services that are basically available uh, in the mix set of uh, things where you can just go and consume the knowledge or you can go and take part of the event or workshop um, that is catering mainly specifically on early phase because it's a lot of the formation that is still happening and there isn't really a company or a startup that can be accelerated. There's a vague team and, and vague structures and vague ideas. When the company is formalized, when there's a shareholder agreement, there's real co-founders, there's real, real IP, there's real commitment. Now it can be applied in more acceleration style. A time condensed intensive services where a lot of progress is tried to make in a very short period of time. And this usually is focused on the validation phase because that's the most painful way, a uh, painful position and also oftentimes the one that uh, really needs a lot of support, access to potential customers, uh, expert external knowledge to solve many things in a quick uh, iteration cycles and so forth. But it can only be applied in acceleration style when there's a committed team members and there's actual product concept to already to develop. And then finally, uh, on the growth phase, it becomes more of internationalization support uh, in various ways, offering channels to, to markets, to countries, creating partnerships between ecosystems, um, creating partnerships between um, companies and working with uh, bigger companies to scale, and then also to inspire more talent and new companies to also highlight the best, best, uh, most successful startups as an inspiration, and the founding team members to 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 basically share their perspectives and experiences uh, from the ecosystem, and also oftentimes, specifically if they make exits, uh, then to giving back and contributing back um, to help others. So. Here's a snapshot of types of services that then can happen uh, with this um, context to support. I'm not going to start listing all of this, but this is just uh, also indicating the type of uh, um, standards and sharing that we are uh, working towards to enable more and more. We have some started uh, concepts of very well documented different support function uh, services and at the same time we're creating more structured way for those who provide services in different ecosystems locally to share their service with others and make it more um, uh, shared development to improve those services for a specific targeted need within the ecosystem. So. Here's a snapshot of a, a, a outcome of a mapping of an ecosystem. Uh, this is just a sample of how it can look like uh, in the simplest format. And then you can pretty much, and you could just click any of these and get the full details of how much money is running through, what are the KPIs, how are they measured, what are the actual results last month and the, the next month, uh, how it has been developed, what was the version, you know, previous version, what are the communication tools, uh, what are the entry criteria, exit criteria, and so forth. So we have a standard format that we, we share for how to document individual services in more detail, and then that standard helps to not only improve individual service to consider, hey, we haven't really thought about this, like the metrics, for example, or KPIs, or what could be the connecting service that uh, feeds our service or what could be the connecting service that we feed into uh, from, from us or what are the three different services and so forth. So here's just a quick snapshot of type of uh, uh, points that are, are covered in that type of documentation. Here's a, a simple canvas approach, two pager, so you can imagine doing this in a workshop setting quickly, kind of uh, 
outlining the description of the service. So what phase it's targeting for, is it a new service or an existing one? What does participates, uh, participators get and so forth? And then on the other side to list, what is the, really the target of this service? What are the KPIs related to the company that are being supported? What are the KPIs related to the service to improve it? And really one of the, one of the biggest missed items is when doing this exercise, it can actually will feel comfort, comfort. Initially it can be like, oh, there's so many services. Then once doing the exercise, you can start to see, oh, but we have these services that are missing. Uh, uh, and usually that also one of the outcomes is that if we take a time perspective into that, like if I'm a startup today and I need, I, I'm looking to get the support service today or this week or this month, is it really available for me just now or is it only once a year, for example? Like here in Finland, uh, we have SLAS that is a great event, but the fact is it's only two days a year. So it's not there 24-7, 365. Um, if we have uh, any specific accelerator program, usually they do one or two batches, maximum four batches a year, and only for a selected number of companies. So it's really important to also really look at uh, seriously what is the availability and how does the gaps look like at any given time of the year. So the problem and challenge uh, when going beyond the exercise is really how to keep this map alive, how to keep it up to date, how to effectively measure all the different services, how to get that information about the services, and how to collect information and data, for example, identifying overlapping services or identifying uh, duplicate or, or multiple times counted startups. So a, a typical data problem is that there's service A, B, and C, and everyone counts their customers. One has 50, another one has 100, and another hand, one has 50, and now you count them together and you have 200. The reality is that most likely you have maximum of 110, perhaps, because the same companies are part of multiple services, either at the same time, or at different times of the, of the life cycle. So we have created these uh, five principles for developing startup ecosystems. And this goes breaking the silos and, uh, and all of the other things. And these are not limited to any level of ecosystem, local, national, vertical, uh, or beyond. So only things that can be understood can be developed. So if it's unclear whether we're talking about innovation ecosystem or entrepreneurship ecosystem, or are we talking about innovation or invention, or are we talking about entrepreneurs or startups, uh, or are we talking about, like if there is no common language, are we talking about startups at you know, minus two? Are we talking about startups at their scaling phase? What are we talking about? So that means that if there is no common language in place, it gets harder, much harder to, to develop because it's, there's too many misunderstandings and misinterpretations uh, happening. If there is no measures in place, if there is no KPIs in place, it's impossible to know if some action made things better or worse. So, it's impossible to improve if there is no measures. It can be, measures can be volume, it can be quality, it can be velocity, or it can be growth. Um, so there can be different types of measures, or it can be purely reaching a target. Did we create the service or did we not create the service? Is it available, is it not available? But there needs to be measures in place. And if there is no shared things to be worked on, it's very hard to work together. And, and uh, if you think of the, the, the tools like, you know, 
um, any 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 common tools that uh, or any common space for that matter. If it's a shared space, it's easy to work together to improve it and then to share it. Same should go into the, the materials and the, the, the services. That way, when working together to improve and utilize these types of standards under open, open licensing, open sharing, uh, the effort becomes much more effectful the more people take part in, in shared work. And the reality is that if there is no shared things to be worked on, there really is no working together. And when there are shared things in use, when there's common language, when there's same data models, when there's same KPIs, uh, then they can be comparable and they can accelerate learning uh, to develop things together. So these are the, the kind of five key elements to consider when doing things together or when considering doing things together with other ecosystem actors.